Sports Snippets, Dennis Sullivan here. It is Saturday, the 17th of April. How in the world are you doing here to talk with you about the Miami Heat and what's going on in the recent game against the Timberwolves? Let me say that last part one more time. The recent game with the Timberwolves. If you do like the content of this particular video guys go ahead hit that thumbs up button that would be awesome also feel free to go ahead and subscribe to my channel sports snippets with dennis sullivan hit that notification bell because i'm going to have a video for you early monday we're going to talk about the game with the nets coming up on sunday so get ready for all that stuff guys but we got some things to talk about today i got the snippets board here I'm very sorry that I have to break in my new Miami Heat poster after that horrible performance against the Timberwolves, which we're going to get into, but it is what it is. It is what it is, and that's what we're going to talk about, and really the state of this team, and I put, of course, the five main points I have for you up on the board as well. So let's get into it, everyone. You know, throughout the season, and in general, of course, as fans, we want to obviously stay positive about this team. There's a lot to like about this Miami Heat team. It's just that combination. And when I say combination, here's what I mean. It's a combination of being optimistic mixed in with what the heck's going on right now and where we're at and... Most importantly, where is this team going as far as the rest of this month of April into May? So part of what I'm putting here on the board for you on this Saturday is, is addressing where we're going, especially when I get into point number four when I talk about playing time and things of that nature. So let's get into it, guys. Very, very disappointing uh, performance by the Heat on Friday night as they would lose to the Timberwolves by a score of 119 to 111 against a team in Minnesota that with the win, get this, with the win, their record is now 15 and 42. Let me say that one more time. With the win... The Minnesota Timberwolves record is now 15 and 42, which technically puts them a half a game with that win, a half a game ahead of the Houston Rockets for now the second worst record in the league. So <clears throat> there you go. I think Houston's, uh, yeah, they're a half game now behind going into Saturday's action, uh, Minnesota Timberwolves. All right, so what we saw and what really is disappointing about this particular game is that the Heat really lost it in the areas of rebounding and defense. That's what did this team in, and I'm going to get into the breakdown of that right now because when you get into shooting the basketball, it was very close. Very close in terms of percentage, both from three-point range and regular, and from the regular field. Just field goal shooting in general and how we're doing as far as shooting the basketball. Both teams did fairly well. Minnesota would shoot around 52% from the field. The Heat would shoot around 49%. But one question that I would ask myself and I would ask you guys, how are we allowing a good shooting percentage, even though it's relatively even with what we did, how are we allowing a team that only won 14 games all year, has a horrendous record of wins and losses, clearly is rebuilding, to shoot almost 52% 50, from the field, which is pretty good. So, I mean, that, that is an issue right there. Free throws were virtually even, where the Heat really lost this game, mainly, along with the fact that we really didn't do a good job stopping the Timberwolves because they had, a, in addition to shooting the ball well, they scored 119 points, was on the boards. He would lose that battle 45-33. to 33. So you were out-rebounded by 12 to a, to a Timberwolves team that really doesn't even know how to win games, guys. Come on. Uh, not to mention in a game that the Heat had to win. You have to get these wins. 
so with the loss, and here's one other thing, after that nice win at Portland Sunday night last week, the Heat finished the road trip at 1-3. and 1-3, and three, which puts the Miami Heat at... Let's start with the snippets board. You got, you got it, guys. The Heat are now a 500 team. That puts them at 28 and 28 for this season. Very disappointing. I mean, that's a 500 team. The Heat that we should be. Now we've added some pieces, of course. You can make the argument that we are better now. I fully, fully am convinced the Heat are better than 500. Come on. But we will see how the rest of this goes and works out through the last 16 games of the season. Point number two, I put AIG. What does that stand for? It stands for Andre Iguodala. The Heat were without him on Friday night. Not to make excuses. Not to make excuses, guys. But, I mean, come on. Things where Iguodala is going to help you, mainly at the defensive end, was sorely missed. Sorely missed on Friday night, and of course he could help you a little bit too on the boards, but mainly on the defensive end, and yes, the 37-year-old veteran was not available for the Miami Heat, and it showed on Friday night. Rebounding department as discussed, three and four tie together. In other words, rebounds and playing time, or the word time, they kind of tie together with one another. Um, and I want to kind of talk about that as I, as I combine performances and we'll kind of close out the video today with who did what and all that other stuff in terms of points and rebounds and all that. Jimmy Butler, I mean, he played well for the Heat. He pretty much plays well all the time. He would finish and he would lead the way with a game-high 30 points, 10 rebounds, 8 assists, 3 steals, and a block. So that's a tremendous stat line right there. Trevor Ariza... Arguably his best, looked look to me like his best offensive game as a Miami Heat player. 21.7 rebounds, 3 assists. He would add a steal and 2 blocks. He played very well. Bam Adebayo, 17 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists. He only took 8 shots from the field. A little disappointing. you got to get Bam more than 8 shots. What's going on with that? He hit 7 of 8 from the field. Duncan Robinson... As consistent as he's been, not, not a bad game, but still he's played much better. 11 points, a rebound, 4 assists. He did add 2 steals and a block. Kendrick Nunn, 7 points, 4 assists. He lost a little playing time to be expected from Hero and Goran Dragic coming off the bench. Dragic would lead the bench players with 15 points, 3 assists. Dragic was effective. He had 3 steals in this one. Tyler Hero, an off night for him. Shot only one of seven from the field, four points, three rebounds, four assists to steal and a block for Tyler Hero. Max Struss played a little bit, three points, two assists, and a steal. Gabe Vincent, three points, two rebounds for the Heat. Nemanja um, Bielitsa, Bielitsa only played like five minutes. I don't understand that. Why did we get him if we're not going to play him? And he's a good player. I don't quite understand that. Maybe... He's not on the same page yet with the coaching staff or the team or what we're trying to do. But Bielitsa only plays five minutes, he gets a rebound. No scores, no scoring, of course. He barely played. I don't, I'm a little bit lost there. Uh, Precious, of course, three rebounds, one assist, doesn't score. Another bigger player. Precious only played 14 minutes. So, yeah, we're losing in rebounds. You just got out rebounded by 12 to the worst team in the NBA, arguably, and in terms of wins and losses, yes, going into the game, they had the worst record in the NBA. You just got out-rebounded by them, and when I put in the word time, okay, so what's going on here? Now I have to get a little critical because what's going on with us losing the battle of the boards, yet guys like Bielitsa and Precious aren't getting any playing time, and where's Dwayne Dedman? Where's he? When are we, when are we moving... When are, we, uh, when are we moving him into the mix? What's going on there? So if you're going to just go with Drogic and Hero off the bench, okay, and you don't have, especially you don't have Iguodala, a little bit bigger player, you don't have him available, and you're going to play, what, Gabe Vincent a little, and Max Struss, you're not going to play any of your big guys, hardly at all. Well, what do you think's going to happen? <laughs> yeah, you're going to get beat on the boards. I mean, if you want... 
the Heat are trying to, it's like we're trying to win games and get into the playoffs by being the smallest team in NBA history. So let, let, we got to slow this down. They need to, we need to readdress who's getting playing time, who is getting in these minutes at key points in these games, and, st and keep focusing on the big rebounding category, rebounds, block shots, and at least compete with the other team in this area. So leave me some comments. I want to hear about that. I want to hear what you have to say about that. And my question to you is, are the Heat playing too small? I want to hear what you have to say about that. For Minnesota, Carl Anthony Towns played fantastic. He's a good player. 24 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, a block. Ricky Rubio, who is, you know, he's late into his career. He's still a good player. He kind of broke out a little. 17, he hasn't been quite as effective lately, but he was effective Friday night. 17 points, 3 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals. Anthony Edwards, 12 points, 4 rebounds, 5 assists, and a steal. Josh Okogi, 10 points, 4 rebounds. Jaden McDaniels, 4 points, rebound, assists, and a steal. The bench for the Timberwolves was very good. Naz Reed, 16.7 rebounds. Uh, Hernan Gomez, Juancho Hernan Gomez, 14.6 rebounds. D'Angelo Russell, 11 points, 5 assists, and 2 steals. Here's a guy, Jared Vanderbilt. So the bench for the Timberwolves really outplayed. The bench for the Timberwolves clearly outplayed the bench for the Heat, let's be honest. And oh, they got a lot of rebounding off their bench. We got hardly anything. Jared Vanderbilt, 9 points, 14 rebounds, 2 steals and a block. Jordan McLaughlin chipped in 2 points, a rebound, 3 assists. Jake Lehman just played a little bit. Just a little bit he played. for. He played like 4 minutes uh, for Minnesota. So guys, next up is Sunday. Big game. Sunday. N New... I almost said New Jersey <laughs> in New York against the Brooklyn Nets Sunday. I'm going to recap that game. Harden did not play on Friday night. My assumption, I'm not sure of the exact update on this. I'm assuming he's not playing Sunday. If you hear anything about that, leave a comment. I was trying to find out right before this video. Didn't get anything concrete on his status for Sunday. But this is a huge game. This is going to be a home game for the Heat. They've lost both contests against the Nets this season. Nets are still trying to get that number one seed in the East. So this is a huge game. It would be the perfect remedy for a horrendous, horrendous loss to the Minnesota Timberwolves. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I'm going to talk to you more about that Net game coming up early Monday, so stay tuned for that. Hit the notification bell, and we will talk soon. Bye for now.